Hi everyone, this is Mari Craig and you're listening to the Small Steps to Wellness show, a podcast where we discuss how we can achieve more wellness in our lives one small step at a time. For the past six odd years, I've taken a special interest in nutrition and I've changed the diet of my family on its head. But as I've dived deeper into the world of nutrition, I have learned that health is so much more than just what we put on our plate. This is why on this podcast, we will be talking nutrition, mental health, being in alignment, holistic health care, self-care, raising children and more. We will also be hearing stories of women's journeys to overcome trauma and what it has taught them on the way. When we share our stories, we realise we are not alone and that things can change for the better. I'm so glad to have you with me on this journey as I explore what health and wellness truly encompass. If you like what you're hearing, please consider rating the show with a five star rating and sharing it with your friends. It really makes a big difference. Now, on with today's show. Hi, and welcome to the Small Steps to Wellness show with me, your host, Mari Craig, where we are discussing how we can achieve wellness in our lives one small step at a time. Now, today I'm really excited because I'm joined by Lindsay Caricata Jones, and she's been my coach for a long time. And this is the first time I'm seeing her in person, and I'm kind of bursting. Um, and I just have to say before I share a little bit about uh, Lindsay that this show kind of started off as uh, me exploring nutrition and me thinking about okay, what's important to me nutritionally. And I realized over the last couple of years that if you want to be healthy and if you want to look at health and try to improve your 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 body mind you have to get the spirit involved you have to get everything involved you have to look at it from a holistic perspective and this is where Lindsay comes in so she's a new thought spiritual spiritual even practitioner and the master spiritual psychology coach she's a quantum healer and host of the soul Bright podcast which i started listening to and i love it um, as a mental projector, she's an all-around consciousness explorer, and she's devoted to bring the truth to the world, helping sensitive humans heal and unlock soulful gifts. It's beautiful. Uh, she does that through trauma healing and the recovery of self, soul, and spirit. Wow, we that's a whole lot of bio there, Lindsay. Welcome to the show. And that's you have to explain half of that to me because I'm still learning. <laughs> That's hi Marie. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. What time is it where you are now? It is 9 20 in the morning. All right. So you're just fresh out of bed and my day is kind of it's nearly, nearly school run for me. Listen, I don't know how you how you look at health, but um but yeah. I, to me it's been the, the revelation the last few years. And we spoke briefly about it before I hit record that. I kind of grew up, I mean, I grew up with the dad in the pharmaceutical industry, for Christ's sake. So, wow. like, I know <laughs> mm-hmm. there was always a, a paracetamol ready to be popped in our house. And um, so I didn't I didn't understand how everything is connected. But that's been something that's been really revealed to me in the past few years. What is your view on sort of health and where do you come from? God, yes. Um, it's so funny, too, when I was just listening to you here, you say paracetamol. I know what that is because my husband's Australian, right? Because that's not what we call well, it. What here. do you call it? <laughs> it's like uh, acetaminophen or ibuprofen or oh, yeah. aspirin. I that kind of funny. stuff. Yeah. Same stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Drugs. But it's funny, the pharmaceuticals, um, immediately when you were saying that, I went back. So I'm 42 now. And when I was 28, I had cancer. I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. And back in my 20s, like, I didn't know anything that I know now. I didn't know anything about health. I didn't know anything about spirituality, holistic wellness. So obviously, I found out I had cancer. It was stage two. And I kind of was like, oh, God, like, I don't even know what cancer is, right? I didn't even understand what they were telling me I had. So I went and I did what they told me I had to do, chemo, radiation. Obviously, we all know what chemo and radiation does to the body, right? It's so it just kicks your ass. Um, And so in hindsight, it was shortly after that, like about five years after cancer, I obviously beat it, right? Haven't had any more recurrences, but that was when I kind of had an awakening spiritually. And I really started to understand when I looked back on my cancer, I was like, oh, that wasn't just a physical thing. Because it was funny when I got diagnosed with cancer, my immediate first thought at that age of 28, which was like back in 2004, and I guess around that time, I was like, oh, what caused it, right? I immediately wanted to know what caused it as though there was some external 
source of what you know was happening to me and like I said later on down the road when I really started to awaken and understand that this the body the mind the spirit is really a holistic system I started to be able to see that my experience with cancer and everything else that I had you know had in my life or had come up against in my life was directly connected to my own mindset my energy and especially my emotions yeah right especially stress anger all these emotions when we hold them in they cause a disease you know and I was I I totally totally think like I've had a huge shift around this in the last five years where I like you you mentioned right growing up around somebody in pharmaceuticals it's like I used to be one of those people who was so sick that I have to medicate if something hurts, I have to medicate, like, right? Let me just get something in my system so I don't have to feel what I feel. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, yep, yep. Without addressing like the deeper yeah. cause of, well, why don't I feel good, right? Why don't I feel healthy? Why don't I feel vital? Yeah. Yeah. Now that's a big one because I think, yeah, I mean, I've got two, two kids there. I'm sat in my daughter's bedroom. I just blur the background because it's a bit messy but um but yeah we're so quick to go oh gosh we can't let our children feel any pain and we can't let them experience anything we have to take it away from them we we have mm -hmm. to make sure everything is always you know uh you know pain free which is maybe kind of well detrimental in the long run and also depriving us of an experience or, or an opportunity to learn i suppose do you oh in gosh, hindsight yeah. of that cancer do you kind of or sometimes think I know other people have said this before and my good friend Miriam who was the one who introduced me to you she yes. said she's at the place where she can say thank you for the trauma because of what it has taught her absolutely a hundred percent because when I write when I look back again on my life and I look back at where I'm where I am now and I see where I'm now and I and I sit with my own the energy of my own consciousness and my own ability to understand life it's like I, I can directly see that all of the struggles the ups the downs the pain the suffering first of all I can see how I directly created all of it right and so in in seeing how I directly was the creator of all of it it's like that feels empowering so rather than feeling like I'm like this victim to life I feel empowered and then I can also see how all of those experiences they expanded me right? They helped me grow. It's like, I don't know where we get this idea that there's never supposed to be a painful moment or a struggle or a suffering in this thing called life, right? Like we, we have this idea somewhere that we're just never supposed to have any pain, but it's like in the pain, yes, that's one way we grow, right? Yes, there's powerful lessons. And I just, I feel like it's the pain. So when life is like mirroring to us, and we have a moment of pain or suffering, it's like that's showing us what's not in truth, right? What's not our highest. And so, so it's like we're having a traumatic experience or something that we think sucks. It's like, okay, so what within me, what is the belief? What is the identity here that is having me create this? And I'm feeling pain because that's not my truth, right? So pain is like the motivator. It's like, you put your hand on something hot and you're gonna go ow so that you don't keep your hand on the hot thing and just melt away your skin, right? And so life is the same way. It's like when we have a pain or a trauma, it's showing us, it's trying to like push us to move, to get us to evolve and expand so yeah. we can come back into that alignment. Yeah, and that knowingness of who we are. I guess you can maybe then handle it two different ways where you go, mm -hmm. well, this is a bit shit um you're allowed to swear yeah. on this podcast by the way uh, <laughs> thank goodness for that no, or, and you can feel like life's happening to me I'm not in control I'm a victim or you can go hang on a minute and I've certainly been at that end of it right or you can go hang on a minute um what is this trying to tell me what can I what kind of lemonade can I make from this right really yeah because I think we've all been on that side of it right mm. like we've all had those moments where something's happened or, or one of those days, right? Where you ever one of those days where it seems like everything is going wrong, right? Oh God, I got a flat tire. And then I hit all the red lights. And then, I, you know, my kid gets sick, whatever it might be. And then uh, somebody, you know, I spilled my coffee, or whatever. It could be all these little things. <laughs> I'm laughing because I think I sent you a voice note about it the other day going, oh my gosh, this is happening. <laughs> 
and, and it can be so easy to get caught up in that and feel like, ah, right? And it's like, okay, but hang on. It's like, why do we get so upset by everything, right? And that's where I really actually feel like that, that physical embodiment and our nervous system, right? And our ability to like, just take that breath and pause before we react. It's like, because we just never know, kind of looping back to what we were just saying about, you know, how Mira said being grateful for the trauma. It's like, we never know what is being born from one thing happening, right? So for example, I could spill my coffee in the morning, which makes me go change my outfit, which then makes me 10 minutes later than I would have been wherever I was going. And in that delay, that could be aligning us with a person that we're meant to meet for, you know, an opportunity. It could avoid an accident. It could, right? We just never know what's playing out because all things are connected. Mm. And when we can't see that all things are connected and that something quote, quote, bad might actually be birthing, you know, some new opportunity, like sickness, right? Even sickness, disease, cancer for me. After that, my, 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 my struggle and suffering in that had a direct like impact on my ability to then look back and be like, wow, my health is directly impacted by my emotions and my energy. I would never have known that without that. Right. So it's like, it all just ties together. Yeah. So I guess in the way, I mean, it sounds maybe a bit morbid to kind of say thank you for the trauma, but if you're on the other side of it, you can kind of say, yeah, that does make sense. I, I, I understand now. I see, I see what this was trying to teach me, I suppose. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. So that was when you were 28 and you now, you're only a couple of years older than me. So we're both, both in our forties. So, so what did that do anything to shift you? Because you are now a spiritual practitioner. I can't say the word Mm. today. And well, how long have you been on that uh, path? Because that's, I guess what the half of the world will call alternative, right? So how long have you been on that path and what brought you on to, to training um, to be a master spiritual coach, for example? What, what, totally. what got you on there? And well, that's maybe a bit long question. I feel like honestly, that's like my whole life path has been leading me to that, right? Yeah. It's funny because when I found um, spiritual practitioner work, which is in line with new thought and, and it goes back to, it's not new, right? It's nothing new that we're doing as spiritual practitioners. It's really bringing together, right? This ancient wisdom that has been through all spiritual traditions in history. When we look and we see we start to recognize the interconnectedness of all things. And so when I found those books and those teachings by people like Florence Global Shin, Ernest Holmes, like which was earlier in my spiritual journey, I started to find the books that some of these people wrote like a hundred years ago. They were writing these books back in like the 1920s, the 1930s. And I was like, wow, they, they it, oh, like this speaks to me on such a level. It was like, I was finding that, you ever find that book that you're reading and you're like, this is the information I have been looking for my whole life, right? So that's what it felt like. So I was kind of doing and dabbling in all of that on my own. I started coaching. Um, I did like some just regular sort of super third dimensional life coach training to really understand how to coach people. But I always knew like, okay, I'm definitely meant to help people. I'm definitely meant to guide people. Um, Then I started learning about human design, learning that I'm a projector, which really means, right, like, okay, I'm here to help people see and help people guide and help people evolve. And it was about two years ago that I found my mentor, Dr. Erin, who does, her thing is New Thought Global Society, which is where I did my spiritual practitioner licensing and training through. When I found that community, I was like, I I had no idea. I felt, I was like, I didn't even know I could study to be a spiritual practitioner. I didn't know that was a thing. (laughs) And so when I found it, I was like, well, this is a no brainer because it was like one of those times where you just find that, that course of study, if you will, that you're like, this is where I belong. Yeah. And it was the first time in my life that in full body knowing I was like, this is what I'm here to do. What an amazing feeling. Yeah. What an amazing feeling. Because I think maybe it it, it might be a bit similar to you then, because also a projector. Um, 
And for anyone who knows, projectors are supposed to wait for the invitations. I was saying to you before we got on. So who's supposed to invite whom and how's this supposed to work? We just sat there waiting for each other. But but I think I'm also kind of with 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 sharing and talking to people on this podcast and 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 helping hopefully people to get a broader perspective on what health is. I feel for the first time also like, yes, I've landed. I am somewhere where I truly belong, where I feel at home, I feel at ease. I'm loving this, but that's taken. I mean, gosh, I, I say to people, gosh, I'm finally knowing what I, I finally know what I want to be, and I'm 40. Like, what is that all about? So, and when before we hit record, uh, I said to you, we, we had this big plan, and I had what we we're going to talk about, and I completely forgot. Um, we spoke about um, living in alignment, and perhaps this is why also for for some of us it takes a bit longer to realize, and for some of us it takes a lifetime to realize what it is that we're meant to do because we're not living in alignment with who we truly are. So, mm-hmm. is that what happened to you, or is that is that oh the journey God. I'm on potentially? I think yeah, we're all on that journey right now because yeah. I think that that as as we look at what's going on all around the world, right, the shift the changes, the things that are challenging people. It's like, it's all, it's all connected to us as a whole living out of alignment, right? Trying to control everything, trying to speak out there. And then you take us as individuals, right? And this is why in my work, I I focus a lot on projectors, on highly sensitive people, on people who know that they're intuitive or empathic, because when we are in that sensitivity and we go through life, right? so much for me, I'll just speak for myself, right? It's like I was constantly trying to be what everybody else needed me to be or wanted me to be. I was so like perceptive to like, well, this is what my parents expect. This is what society expects of me, right? And I was twisting myself into not trying to be all those things. And a lot of times when we really start to, there's a lot of like conflicting things oh I'm supposed to be this but then I'm also supposed to be this right and it's like what so we find ourselves at a point where it's like you know for me it happened in my 30s where I really looked at my life and I was like like this isn't this isn't authentic to me nothing about the way I'm living it doesn't feel empowering it doesn't align with what I truly believe in here you know I chased the like okay I in my 20s there were points high points where I was making tons of money. I had relationships. I was able to travel. I had a hot, right? Anybody would have looked at my life and been like, oh my God, like she has so much freedom. It's so great. And I was like, this, this is it. Yes. And so I just knew that I needed that deeper, deeper, deeper. And I think that that's really what alignment is about, right? We, we can hear a lot of talk about alignment where it's like, people are still trying to like organize out there to be in alignment. But what we don't understand, and this is like the core of what it is to be a spiritual practitioner, it's understanding that when we just align in here, when we get so aligned in heart, soul, mind, like our authentic truth, everything else comes into alignment. It all falls into place. And then we don't have to be out there trying to manage everything and please everybody else, right? It's just like, yeah, I think that's the journey we're all on. Yeah, yeah, no, there's an old like firefight, all this, all the external things instead of kind of going within and seeing, okay, where, you know, how does this feel for me? I think you're right. The last couple of years, I mean, I, I, I've been walking around the last couple of years kind of surprised that uh, my views that I thought were pretty mainstream and pretty sort of digestible to most people have been like, what on earth? How can you feel that? How can you think that? And um, I think that's what's gotten me to sort of look a bit within and go, okay, so clearly I'm on the, on the fringes here. So what am I going to do? Because I feel really, you know, uneasy about everything. And um, so it, I guess mm. that kind of trauma of the last couple of years, if you will, has, I think it's oh. a, ch- a lot of change and a lot of growth for a lot of people because we are seeing, as you said, what we truly feel comfortable with, what we truly feel happy with and what really doesn't sit well with us. So that's been a, you know, coming out kind of the other side, uh, touch wood. Mm. Um, I feel like a lot of us are kind of opening up to, you know, seeing how can I live my life differently that works better for me. And that I guess is, living in alignment then isn't it a little bit more oh my gosh yes 
Mm -hmm. right so much yes and thinking about the last couple of years that just popped into my head when you were saying that is like I, I, again in my own experience it's like so I mean there are people out there who think and, and again right for me everything that I teach on everything that I believe all the spiritual practitioner work coaching work like I told you right it's like I've never found a body of information and a, and a school of study where I have felt so at home yeah. so right so aligned like this is my jam I love it I'm so passionate about it and then to bring that out to the world to to be sometimes received by people that think it's absolute nonsense or people think I'm just absolute like we're crazy right to, to think the way we do and now that's really being highlighted and once upon a time that would have thrown me into like such panic it would have shut me down I would have not shared it, right? Because the thought of someone coming onto my thing and being like, but I don't like what you're saying or right, whatever it might be. And there's so much projection happening in people who who aren't able or willing to 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 do that deep, deep inner work and healing. Um, now they're they're getting very challenged and very triggered. So there's a lot of projection, right? There's a lot of like, ah, I'm gonna just throw all my stuff at you. And once upon a time, I would have taken it all and I would have let it shrink me and I would have let it shut me down. And I would have discarded that feeling in here of what I know to be so true and so right and so authentic for me. I would have put aside in favor of pleasing everybody else. Yeah. And over these past two years, that has absolutely been the biggest release of my life, the biggest healing of my life, because it, it's like, I think we're in this like kind of precipice point of recognizing where there's like one side of the spectrum where everything wants to just be so like hyper inclusive to the point where it's like, well, now you're just not talking to anybody because if you try to please everybody, you're not talking to anybody yeah. and nobody's benefiting from that. And then there's the other side where those of us are really like coming into alignment and authenticity where we're recognizing it's okay if I'm not for everybody. It's okay if not everybody likes what I say. I get to have my own opinions and experiences and so do they, yeah. right? To me, that's real freedom. It's like, how do we begin to evolve to come to the place where we all recognize that we're having here, we're, we're all having our own experience and we get to do that together and I don't have to you know have anybody believe what I believe and nobody I don't have to believe what other people believe yeah. and I can still love them right I can still hold them in love and honor and truth and compassion because all of the anger and the hate and the rage people are holding it's like that's going to be the biggest thing that impacts people's health I swear by that you know what I mean that is something that I will lie I 100% believe that the biggest thing that is like bringing people into sickness and illness and all of the things we're seeing right now is all of that just that that yeah the anger and the fear you know the fear well absolutely I mean and it's it's not it's not something we just sat here thinking oh this this might be true because we feel it I mean stress causes uh you know cortisol levels to rise and eventually you're going to have more inflammation in your body and inflammation is the root to an right. awful lot of illnesses so it's not right. like always been associated with an awful lot of, of uh, illnesses and so it's not something that <clears throat> we just sit here and go oh yeah I, 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 think, I think this is the case because I've experienced it myself but actually I mean with the studies I do now around study. culinary medicine it's literally stress is such a big factor and I think we tend to overlook and we think we, we tend to also go but this is society this is how we need to live and as I right. guess projectors as well we feel we, we're in this society that is not going kind to of run by us and we feel like we have to just sort of keep up keep up keep up keep up not live in alignment with who we truly are and basically burn out as a result burn I out. think for a lot of us at the end and that's certainly not bringing any wellness in our lives as this podcast is trying to achieve yeah. At so all, how do we get all. into alignment then? What how do you help your or your clients to um to to live in alignment with who they are? Where do we start? Yeah, so for me, you know, because I did too, I, I tried to do all the things out there. And what I started to realize, so probably about two years after my like big spiritual awakening, uh, I was on the the yoga path, right? Which I mean I love yoga. I love 
breath work. I love all of that study as well, but I was really into yoga and it's like what I was seeing in other people and then starting to see in myself was that, right? It's like I could go to yoga and I would feel so peaceful after a class and I would eat well and I was vegetarian and vegan at one point, right? And all the things. And then I was still like full of rage. You know what I mean? At other times I was still operating up here all the time, stressed out. My nervous system was on high alert. I was still in survival mode, right? And so that then led me to where I started doing my own inner work. And then obviously that birthed me doing the deep inner work with other people. And so I really truly believe in like, a, um, it's like a sandwich. That's what I've kind of like <laughs> coined it, a sandwich approach to our healing and, and our wellness journeys. And that is that we, if we approach it from both sides, so on one side, approaching it from the physical, absolutely, right? Like cleaning up the diet, um, getting moving, right? It doesn't have to be, it could be any kind of movement, breath work practice, embodiment work. Um, I personally am a huge fan of craniosacral therapy as a body modality, acupuncture, we're talking about acupressure, right? Anything that works physically on the body, but then also pairing that with that deep subconscious reprogramming, trauma healing, um, energetic work, quantum work, which is just basically, you know, another word for energy work, because it's just the idea of quantum healing. It's just getting to the very smallest root of the issue. And I feel like when we do both, it like brings it together. Right. And then we find that our life is like this nice overall, like whole picture, like a nice sandwich. Right? Yeah. We have, like, What's inside the sandwich, right? Like, <laughs> a really good one a wholesome one because one of the things I started to see it's like people would clean up their diets right they, they would work out but then they would be like obsessive and militant and stressed out and full of judgment for people who weren't living that way and I was like hang on like okay yes you're eating healthy but what state are you living in inside right and so it's like it's got to be this holistic picture because when we're truly in that alignment and we clear out the trauma and we let the nervous system relax and we get all the junk out of the subconscious mind guess what we're naturally going to choose to eat better we're going to choose to move we're going to choose to right like make better choices and I'll say one last thing about that because it just popped into my head so I feel like it's relevant so I once read a study um, when I first was getting into trauma work and I was really also kind of working with the chakras a lot I read a study that somebody did where he worked with he had two groups of people who were struggling with um, weight and obesity and he took both of them through this whole you know plan with eating and diet they lost weight but one group also received deeper healing work they received trauma work they received trauma healing and the other group did not every single person in the other group who had lost weight ended up gaining it back because what then they and as they studied the more they started to recognize that the weight was a buffer for these people because the trauma inside just had them not feeling safe and the people who received the trauma healing work didn't gain the weight back they ended up like moving into just a more holistic health and, and, and not that like a number has anything to do with our health, right? Like, it's like, it's just, how do we feel in our body, right? How does our body function and feel? And so that was really profound for me when I recognized that, when I read that study, because I was like, it's true. And I think also, if you, if you, if you approach from both sides, as you said, and I, I've, I've heard this as well, I listened to a podcast in the UK with the doctor called Dr. Chatterjee, and he's very known in the US mm. as well. And he also mentioned the study or and also he's seen patients who have kind of struggled to lose weight after a certain point, because actually, the weight might be there to protect you uh, emotionally. Yes. But um, so big. But I think also when you approach it from both sides, so for example, for me, nutrition wise was the first step I took. And then that led me to have more kind of energy and sort of surplus energy yeah. to look at other things in my life, right? So then I added on my training. And then I was at the point where I was like, okay, I can then now start adding on other things or be, I was more receptive to other things because I actually had mm -hmm. the bandwidth 
to look into okay what else is it that I can I that. that I can focus on so I think but also I think also as you said rightly so if you start on the other end and looking at so what's going on in, in, inside you really once you heal that you're not going to want to fill your body with junk so that's why yeah yeah I like your sandwich. I love that. yeah <laughs> I love that and I love that you said that because it's the perfect it, it, it's just there's no one and that's the thing I think we fall into too right we we're we all want that like one thing that one way somebody just tell me the one thing I have to do yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's so much more than that right there isn't just one way there's no right way that's right for every single person we're all going to find our own way and it's like for you the perfect thing is like right so it started out here with the physical but then you were open to that next layer right you were open to going into that next thing that was well, kind I became of right open. yeah I yeah became open you, it. yeah but it's interesting i had actually did a post on that on instagram the other uh, that, yeah well i think it was today even uh, about like there's not one magic thing that's just going to solve everything i mean and i wonder if maybe that's also why calorie counting has been, been so popular oh because God. it's like it's giving us a system because we want something that we want to measure that's the society of living. Well, I want to measure, okay, oh, what, what am I doing? And actually, uh, so when I say to, tell people, well, if you want to change your life around or like lifestyle, if you want to lose that weight or if you want to feel healthier, better in your body, blah, blah, patience. And that's something yes. we, do, we, we, we can't be dealing with patience because that, that just takes too long, right? Now, now, now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's so bad here too, because like, I, I don't know for you guys over there how fast Amazon takes so, but like there are places here where you can literally have same day delivery right yeah. same day delivery and I think back to being a kid you used to have to like post your order in and then wait for it to come and it would take like two three weeks at times right and it's like now everything is digital I can have it right away I can download it now I can get it shipped to my house next day same day and I feel like yes that's all beautiful and it's all awesome and it's all amazing where we've advanced mm -hmm. and I think internally in our consciousness, we also have to advance to recognize like, yes, we can have things that are fast and some other things take time and that's okay too. Yes, exactly. And, like, and so it's like, when you, do, when you do trauma work and everything, it's like, actually, so what do you mean? I have to do the work. I have to actually spend time doing yeah. it. I have to look at this. And you know, I, I'm totally committed to the work that we're doing together. But even I saw this one video you posted that you tagged me and you said, watch this. And I thought, gosh, the thing is nearly two hours long. Ah. <laughs> this requires effort because I think we're so used to now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm working my mm -hmm. way through it. But I think we're so used to now thinking that everything has to be so snappy and, and yeah. it causes again, causes again stress. So what, what is the um, what is the answer then, I suppose? So where do we start? I mean, mm. we should all be working with you, right? But for those of you, but those of us who, who can't or won't or whatever, where can we start to, to get a bit more balance and, and feel like we're mm. a bit more aligned? And I guess, especially as projectors, where we kind of feel like we're being overrun by everyone else and taking on so much stuff from everyone else that it can feel really overwhelming at times. Totally. Yeah. And I, I love that. So one of the things to, to for everybody to remember, regardless of, right, if you could work with a coach, if you could not work with a coach, wherever you're at, it's like at, at contributing to what you just said too about, right, the two hours for the video or whatever, right? Oh, I actually have to put in time. It's like to remember that like whatever we give our attention to, right? That's like, like paying attention, right? We're paying, there's a cost, there's a price. And that's the thing we see. Right. So whatever we're feeding in our lives, that's what we're going to magnify. And so someone who maybe is just starting out and it's like, oh, God, where do I start? It's like, right, get a book, go on YouTube, come on Facebook, come on Instagram. There is so much valuable, free resources out there that can begin to educate you, that can begin to expand you. And it's like, uh, right. Oh, okay. I got to sit and watch the thing for 45 minutes. But if you start to remember whatever I'm giving my, and I've done it too, trust me. And when I, when I heard this, put it this way, that there's always a price and I'm always paying a price. It's just, what am I paying for? And when are you and paying I, it? And yeah. And mm -hmm. when are you, yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh damn. Okay. So that means every time I'm kind of trying to short change my morning meditation practice or my spiritual practice, it's going to feel it in favor of what going over here and scrolling on my phone or, you know, sitting and just doing like nothing because sometimes as a projector, when I get tired, 
I want to just sit and do nothing, which is fine. And I can still do that spiritual practice, right? So I think that that's the key, right? For anybody, no matter where you're at, something you can begin with right now is to begin to just connect in a spiritual way to yourself, higher self, spirit, source, God. It doesn't matter what you want to call it, right? It's just, you could go out in nature and sit and look at the trees or look at a flower. It's just mindfulness even is a wonderful place to start. To just begin to let yourself unplug from what's going on out there and start because you're ultimately every single one of you hearing this is going to guide yourself you're going to bring yourself to exactly where you need to go whatever resources you need you're going to find them they're going to find you like Rumi said right what you seek is seeking you Mm -hmm. so where to start get really clear on what it is you want for your life and yourself and then allow it to start to come to you. Allow yourself to let go of what's not that and welcome in what is that. Yeah. And yeah. feel that you deserve it when it comes to your way. Yeah. Well, that mm. can be a big part, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a big trauma thing. I'm not worthy. Yeah. I don't, oh, it does, what do you mean it gets to be easy? It can't be easy. I have to suffer. I have to struggle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, there's so much I could say about that. So much I could say about that. <laughs> Uh, and so much I could ask you about that. And um, would you mind um, sharing with me how people can get in touch with you? I mean, you can send mm. it, we can put it all in the show notes and uh, you have a couple of freebies as well, I think that you share with people. And um, if people want to get in touch with you, is Instagram the best way of kind of going deeper? Totally. Because we can sit here and talk and talk and talk and talk oh and talk for God. hours. And there's so much, I've got a barking dog downstairs as well. So that's great. That's adding to my, I'm just breathing through it. <laughs> it's all good can hear it. yeah. it's all good we're Instagram pa- or Facebook. yeah we're practicing patience it's all good it's all good but I think so for me personally finding you I was open to finding out you know how to get more alignment in my life because I was feeling stressed and I was like I d- didn't know what to do but I was I was open and there you were right yeah. yes via via a friend and then I was like oh but I have to pay money oh and actually it's not the money it's it, am I worthy of actually receiving that and then I had what we I call a bit of a fucking moment where I was like yeah I'm just doing it and I'm going to go all in I'm going to do this and I have to say I mean I mean as and as you said earlier you might not be for everyone but for me so far the work that we're doing has been truly enlightening and and it's it's um yeah enlightening I think that's 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 the best word to describe it and I do feel that that it's helping me also low my shoulders where normally I would have been like ah you know and 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 that truly brings more wellness right when we can we'll see what works for us what doesn't work for us how we can I don't know use how we're put together in a way that benefits us and benefits thereby those around us in a better way you know there is it's been it's been really really enlightening for me to look at this but a couple of years ago I would have pooped the whole idea so there Ah. you go Mm-hmm. I love that. That's such mm-hmm. a testament to everything we're talking about, right? Yeah, but this and is I mean, if 15 years ago, I would have too. I would have looked at what I would have looked at myself now and been like, oh boy, yeah. what that? <laughs> She's like out there. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm just like, nope, yep, I'm that person. It doesn't matter. I get it. I know. I believe it. I, <laughs> and I don't need anybody's approval on it. So it's so liberating. Yes, know? exactly. And I love seeing you grow and expand and open and find your confidence in everything you're doing too yeah no I I mean that must be that must be one of the great things about being a coach as well that you see people really getting it at that moment where they go ah I get it now this makes sense Mm -hmm. yeah and then so when you've experienced it yourself I guess you want to pass it on to others as well of this is how much joy and how much pleasure and how much uh, relaxation and how much all the positives you can have in your life if you do a bit of the hard work and really get to the bottom of okay what's triggering me how you know when I respond like this what does that actually do and when you can really really dig down mm-hmm. and and sort of it all kind of unfolds it's amazing I think I mean some of the questions you ask me it's like I'm like oh my gosh I hadn't thought of it that way that's mm-hmm. really interesting Mm-hmm. And then some of the questions are like, oh, shit, she really sees me. Ugh, this is painful. But you know that actually. <laughs> the power of having a projector in your life. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Look, I think this has been really, really useful. And I know a lot awesome. of protectors are going to listen to this and going to go, right, well, I need to find this woman. So what I'll do is I'll, oh, I'll put all the all the information about how to find you in the show notes yeah. and um, and then they can find you. And I think what you're doing is so important. And I and I I love that so many of the people I speak to who are coaches, they and actually people who work with nutrition as well, they're coming from a personal point. They're coming from something has happened to them in their lives and they've um, recovered from it or they've grown from it. And now they want to pass it on to others. And I think what a gift. What a gift. right? Yeah. It is a gift. Yeah. It's the best gift we can give. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I feel like it's just that's the contribution we're here. That's how we're gonna evolve and change and shift consciousness and create a, a more beautiful aligned world. Yes. Start exactly. within here. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. And also just to finish off, I love also what you say about we can all sit here and have this conversation. We don't all have to agree, but we can all, you know, have love and empathy and sympathy for each other. And as we do in the UK, I don't know what it's like in the US, but we can also catch you know what? Love this conversation, completely disagree with it. Now should we go down the pub and have a pint. Right. Right. Yes. That's all it's about, be- right? How boring would it be if everybody thought exactly the same thing? Yes, exactly. What would that serve, right? Yes. It wouldn't serve, but it's wild, you know, it's wild. So, so in the knowledge that all... we're all not, we're not all going to be palatable to everyone, but those, right. who, those we meet, they really, really respond to us and we respond to them. That's where the magic happens. But in order, I guess, for that to happen, we need to know who we truly are within and, and be in alignment right. with that. So, yeah. Really. Truly, and be in alignment with our true authentic values. Yeah. yeah. Amen to that. Yay. What do you say so in, in, in New, uh, New Thought Global? And so it end, is. Well, and so it is. Yeah, yep. and, and I so love that. Is. I love that because it's like, it's, I don't know what you would call it, but it's just, you say all these things. And when you, I often find when I hear you say that, you say, and so it is. I'm like, yeah, you're right. Done. And yes, so it is. Exactly. No matter what we say, and so it is. Yes. I'm sick, and so it is. I can't afford it, and so it is. Yes. I'm wealthy, and so it is. I love mm-hmm. that. I love that. I'm going to stick with that for a bit. Um, right. Thank so you so good. much, Lindsay, for um for being on. And I don't know if I woke up too early or <laughs> if it's all good. No. Perfect. But um, I will uh, be sharing all the notes on how to get people, uh, how to find you uh, on the show notes. But thank you so much again for coming on to the show and sharing this wisdom. I think it's so, so, so important that we start looking further afield to find out what really brings wellness into our lives. So thank you so much for this. Thank you. It's been awesome and so much fun. Oh, great. Love it. Take care. You've been listening to the Small Steps to Wellness show with Mari Craig. I am passionate about helping mums get their energy back through simple nutritional changes because we know that if mummy is happy, the family is happy. If you would like to connect with me, you can find me on Instagram under at Small Steps to Wellness or visit my website, smallstepstowellness.info. Speak to you soon.